How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today we have our very first Commoner Blitz deck tech going over the deck that I went 3-1 and one in a recent um, like casual online tournament that DM Armada was hosting. Deck is a lot of fun, you can push out an absurd amount of damage and even though it's commoner, it's still quite powerful. If you would like a primer on the commoner format, I did make a video of it a few days ago, about a week ago, I think it was posted, just kind of going over what commoner is, the various types of ways people play it, and why you should be playing it, because it's a lot of fun, and it's a really, really low budget way to get into flesh and blood, and the decks are still powerful too. Um, I think some decks are a little maybe too powerful, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Before we get started, I do want to mention a couple quick sponsors of the channel. If you're looking to pick up any Flesh and Blood product, namely some, you know, maybe Everfest pre-orders, check out my channel Fireball affiliate link. Using that link goes and supports me and the local game store that you're buying from because Channel Fireball's new marketplace consists of local game stores, which is excellent. Also, down in the description down below, you will find redzonerogue.com where you can buy my own custom merch, play mats, and that kind of stuff. And I've been partnering with some really, really good artists like Bima, a flesh and blood artist, to do sweet play mats and that kind of stuff. We're gonna have uh, more sleeves and, and the works in the future. I'm currently in talks with two flesh and blood artists for next year's uh, play mats. I think I kind of want to do one mat a quarter next year. I, I kind of want to slow down a little bit, have fewer mats, but like really, really high quality ones. So I'm going to be working with flesh and blood artists and uh, other artists that I really, really like. Um, maybe some anime artists too, so kind of mix it up here and here and there. So that's, that's all of that. Let's get on with the deck tech. I think commoner is a really fun format. Um, it's not like my format of choice. I still love you know, like class constructed and, you know, blitz formats. And I'm always a fan of limited, but it's fun to kind of like chill out with some commoner every now and then. And it's a fantastic way to get people into the game because the decks are all common, so it's dirt cheap. So I can just throw one together with all of the bulk that I have and just be like, here you go. Here's a super powerful com commoner deck on, on the house. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Take a look at my Dorinthia deck tech. Let's do it. Before we get started with the deck proper, I did want to mention that I suited this deck up in proper fashion with some sweet golden dragon shield matte sleeves. I think they're absolutely perfect for this deck, as well as these um, dual matte sleeves. The dual matte sleeves are so good. The dual matte sleeves are actually so good. They are my favorite sleeves currently on the market. They just feel they just feel so good. So, yeah, I got I gotta accessorize properly. And I do have an affiliate link with Dragon Shield in the description down below. Use that if you want to buy any custom sleeves or any of these Dragon Shield sleeves. I highly recommend the dual mat though. And that's not just because I'm an affiliate link. Seriously, the dual mats are super good. So let's get, let's get on with it. All right, everyone. So these are my currently built commoner decks. These are 100% common commoner decks. No rares or anything at all. Though I do know some people allow rares. Some people allow rare heroes or rare weapons, but for my builds, 100% common. Today we're going to be doing obviously the Dorinthia deck, but let me know in the comments down below which one of these other decks you would like me to cover next. And yes, we do have two different Lexi decks, uh, as well as I'm currently building a Kano deck, and it's going to be a wild Kano deck. So just let me know in the comments down below any one of these decks you'd like to see next, or maybe that weird Kano deck. So let's clear these off, and we'll start talking about Dorinthia. So this Dorinthia deck is a deck that I went three and one with at a pretty casual event held by DM Armada. Um, though a couple of the players that I was played against were going pretty hard, namely the uh, the Ira player that I played against was going pretty hard. But uh, I think this deck is actually fantastic. Probably one of the easier decks to build in the format um, and just very, very powerful. So obviously we have Dorinthia as our hero. I think you can build this with Kasai. Or I think you can build this with double sabers, Dorinthia, if you want to play with rares. But I like this version of Dorinthia. We are going to be running the uh, Dawn Blade here. So Dorinthia just has a once per turn effect. Whenever a weapon you control hits, you may attack an additional time with that weapon this turn. It doesn't gain go again. It just lets you attack with a weapon a second time if you have an action point. Four health, or I mean four uh, hand size, 20 health. So being able to hit with a weapon is super important. Remember that you have to hit with it 
to attack a second time. Otherwise, you don't get to attack a second time, even if you already have Go Again. This Quicken Token, we'll talk about it later, but you do use it. Our weapon of choice is the Dawn Blade. <laughs> Fantastic weapon. Uh, very, very good. Three attack, one cost to attack. If it hits and it's the second time it has hit this turn, put a plus one counter on Dawn Blade. And at the beginning of your end phase, if it has not hit this turn, remove all plus one counters. Um, all of the games that I won, and even the game that I lost, I suppose, I always got a counter on Dawn Blade, and it is so busted with at least one counter. And with two counters, it's just game over. Attacking for five every turn, plus all of our buffs. There are multiple turns when I was able to attack for 16 in a single turn with like minimal effort, like really, really easily. So, um, and that's just attacking twice with Dawn Blade, getting up to eight attack, um, which is not that hard, <laughs> not that hard in this deck. So Dawn Blade is super, super good. Uh, for the equipment, we are running the Refraction Bolters as a mainstay. Whenever a weapon you control hits, you may destroy the rack of Refraction Bolters. If you do, the attack gains go again. It has Battle Worn, which means you can block with it. I think Warrior is the best class in Commoner for blocking, just because you can run a, a full loadout with blocking equipment. Super good. Always run the Bolters. I'm also running Gallantry Gold. Yes, this is a gold foil. Uh, once again, it also has Battle Worn, so you can block with it. Action, one resource, destroy Gallantry Gold. Your weapon attacks gain plus one this turn, go again. Which is nuts. I like to block with these early and then pop them basically in the same turn, attacking for multiple times with Dawn Blade. If the Dawn Blade can already have a plus one counter, making it into four, getting an additional plus one, making it into five for the turn, plus any other bonus, any other plus three bonus that's coming in for like eight. Oh, oh. So yes, Gallantry Gold, very good. Uh, I also like to run the Iron Rot set, Iron Rot Helm and Plate. I run this up against almost every single hero, uh, unless I'm gonna be playing against like a, a Kano or something like that. Just the, just some more to block with, really, really good. Uh, I do have some other options in case I need them. Hope Merchant's Hood, Best of the First Fist, and a full set of Null Rune. This is stuff that I've not actually played with yet because I haven't felt that I needed. But, um, you know, if you feel that you are gonna have bad draws against a certain opponent and you just need very specific cards. Hope Merchant's Herd is for that. Vest is very interesting because it, it triggers on attack actions, but we are running some attack actions. So the, the idea behind this is you attack with an attack action card that has go again, and then pop your Vest of the First Fist, and then you're able to attack with your Dawn Blade plus a pump for free, which is good. So you can come up with like a Scar for a Scar. If it hits, pop the Vest, and then you can come in with a Dawn Blade and then uh, hold up a resource for a uh, reaction, which is good. I really like this actually. Uh, and then we have the full Null Rune versus things that require Null Rune, mostly just Kano. I did play against Br uh, Briar deck. I did not put a single piece of Null Rune in because you know what? I was like, you know what? I'll take your hit and then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna attack you <laughs> for, for 16. And let's see, let's see how you deal with that. Uh, you can either just take the 16 or you're gonna block it out and then just be on the back foot. Either way, I was very happy. So uh, very happy against the Briar that I played against. Uh, and so yeah, this is our loadout. These are our, our flex slots, but our typical loadout is just heavy blocks here, Dawn Blade, of course, and then good old Dorinthia at the helm. And let's talk about the, the rest of the deck. I basically set this up in terms of cards that pump, cards that give us go again, and then uh, attack actions. So we do run a ton of cards that give us go again, which is fantastic. Um, which is basically what you need. And at common, you basically have two options that I think are good. You have Driving Blade and you have Hit and Run. And so we're running um, basically the reds and the blues for Driving Blades. We don't really care about the pump on it, though the pump is good. It's a two cost card. It says your next weapon attack this turn gains plus three and go again. And then this itself has go again. So it's just really good. Coming in for Dawn Blade for six with go again is very strong. And if you're holding up an extra resource, say so you, so you pitch a blue to pay for this. Well, actually just a blue, blue for this is the attack and this. So you'd have to have a couple other uh, resources available, but still very good. And uh, almost all of our cards block for three. Like I said, this deck blocks for a lot. And then the blue version, plus one and go again. Just really, really good on these cards. Fantastic. Uh, next up we have the hit and runs. We are running the full set of hit and runs, all six. Um, this is a fantastic card. So it's zero and it just says, your next weapon attack this turn gains go again. If you've attacked with weapon this turn, your next attack this turn gains plus three go again. So th this is fantastic. So basically you can set up really, really big turns with this card, even with just Dawn Blade. So if you're able to attack with Dawn Blade, maybe pop your uh, Refraction Bolters or something like that, then you can follow that up with a hit and run to give it plus three. Or you can just lead with a hit and run. 
Um, so really good. Love this card, especially the, the blue pitch version. Uh, I find the, the plus three doesn't matter all that much, but it does sometimes. Speaking of zero cost plus threes, we have Sharpened Steel. Fantastic card, just zero cost plus three to our next weapon attack. So we're running the uh, red versions and we are running the yellow version, just zero cost plus two, just really, really solid. Uh, we also are running push forward. This is a one cost plus three, but it says if you've attacked with a weapon this turn, your next attack this turn gains dominate, which is sweet. That dominate applies to any attack. So if we wanted to attack with a weapon and then play a push forward and then play like Scar for a Scar or something like that, the Scar for a Scar would have dominate, which is kind of funny. Or this is just really good for the second attack. If you're somehow able to push damage for the first attack, the second attack is all that more punishing and hitting a second time because it has dominate is really good to give counters to the Dawn Blade. We're running the red versions of this as well as the blue versions of this because dominate is super good. Who cares if it's just plus one if you can get the dominate. Also, we just need cards with good resources. Basically, pay playable cards that are blue are a premium. We're also running the Nature's Path Pilgrimage. This is just a, it's, it's okay. I found this card to be one of the least good cards in the deck, but it's fine. It's a one cost, plus three to the next weapon attack. And if the weapon attack hits and you have no cards in your arsenal, you get to reveal the top card of the arsenal. If it's an action card, put it face down into your arsenal and gains go again. Not a reaction, it has to be an action. We are running two of those. Uh, we also are running Iron Song Response. So now we are on to the reactions. All of the other cards that we just talked about, those are all just action cards, just cards we play to pump up our weapon or give it go again. These ones are reactions, which are fantastic. These are the cards that are gonna make your opponent think, hmm, does he have it? And a lot of the times, yeah, we might. So Iron Song Response is amazing. It's a zero cost card. It uh, doesn't do anything unless the reprise trigger is active. And the prize trigger says, if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, target weapon attack gains plus three. So it's a zero plus three uh, reaction, super good. Only if they if defend it with a card from their hand. Still really, really good. We're running the red, the yellow, which is a plus two, and the blue, which is a plus one. All of these cards are amazing in this deck. Like, absolutely amazing. Staple, 100%. We're also running a Stroke of Foresight. This is a one cost plus three. So for reactions, I really like the one cost plus three. For the non-reactions, I like the zero plus threes, but you gotta, you gotta use what you gotta use here in Commoner. So it's a one cost plus three and also has reprise. If the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, draw a card, then put a card from your hand on top or bottom of your deck, which is really sweet. Um, and that's not an on hit effect, you just do it. So you can maybe put something that's like useless on the bottom or draw a card and then put something useless on the bottom, which is great. Maybe maybe draw into another attack reaction, like an Iron Song response or something. I don't know, this card's just super sweet. So I'm running two of these, just the reds. Uh, speaking of which, we have Out for Blood, another one cost plus three reaction. Um, if the defending hero is defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, the next attack gains plus one. So it's just really good for pushing through damage for the second attack. And like I said, one cost plus three is pretty good for reactions. Next up, we have good old Razor Reflex. This is a one cost plus three on a sword or dagger or plus three on an attack action card with cost one or less. And if that attack action hits, it gains go again, which is super good. Um, just keep that in mind. We can use this one on our attack actions, which we do not have very many of in the deck. Speaking of which, let's talk about our attack actions. You can see we're not running very many of them, but the ones that we're running I think are sweet. First up is Scar for a Scar. Zero cost, four. If you have less life than your opponent, it gains go again. Just a super good card to run. I like running Scar for a Scar at the end. So like, I like saving Scar for a Scar, attacking with the Dawn Blade and threatening more damage. And if they're like, oh, you know, if your Dawn Blade has go again already, they're gonna be like, oh, I'm just gonna block it out so you can't attack again. And you're like, okay, cool. And then I Scar for a Scar you. So yeah, pretty sweet. Um, so we're running two of these. Next up we have Flock of the Feather Walkers. This is where the Quicken token comes into play. So the Flock of the Feather Walkers is a one cost five attack card, which is pretty good. Uh, it says an additional cost to play it, reveal a card in their hand with cost one or less, which is almost the entire deck except for the Driving Blades. Uh, and it says create a Quicken token, which is super good. So yeah, <laughs> that's super good. Quicken token says when you play an attack action card or attack with a weapon, destroy Quicken and then it gains go again, which is really good. So this is another way to give our weapon go again if we don't have the other cards and it's a good way to set up for a really sweet turn so really like the flock of the feather walkers i love flock of the feather walkers at the end of another chain like scar for a scar but the same same kind of use situation right we're attacking their weapon and they're like oh i'll just block it all out 
I'll overblock it with an unmovable or something. And even ha even though it has go again, you can't attack with a weapon again. And you're like, okay, flock the feather walkers. Here's, here's, here's another five. Uh, and then I also get a quicken token. Pretty sweet. And then the final card is one of my favorite cards in the deck. I'm so, I'm so happy I got to finally play this in a constructed deck. Uh, this is Brandish. It's a one cost. It says, if Brandish hits, your next weapon attack gains plus one. And then, then this has go again, and it comes in for two for the yellow, and it comes in for one with the blue. What I really like about this card is it's such like a little piddly card, right? It's just coming in for two, and most people are like, well, I'll take the two, whatever, it's just two. But if it hits, it pumps up my sword, and people are like, oh no, it's gonna pump up the sword, so now I have to block it, and they're committing cards to block on a little piddly brandish. Oh, I love this card. It's so sweet. Same with the blue one. Blue one's even better. It's only coming in for one, and they're like, oh no, I, I got I got a block, I got a block. So, um, yeah, I really like brandish in this deck. Uh, so, yes, this is my Dorinthia commoner deck. Even though this deck is all commons, it did not feel weak at all. This deck feels very, very strong. And um, it's a it's a lot it's a lot of fun to play with. You can always just be like driving blade attack with the dawn blade. Dawn blade's super threatening, and that's one of the things I really love about this deck in particular. It doesn't feel any weaker because it's common. It still feels super super strong. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please let me know what you think of the deck in the comments down below, and also let me know which one of those decks at the beginning you would like me to feature in the next deck tech. I think I want to do deck techs on most of these because they're going to be pretty pretty easy and pretty fun and it's a good way to start to play the game if you are looking to get into flesh and blood cheaply just find some people who play commoner and just jam some games powerful powerful decks still really really cheap so thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time for some more flesh and blood content have a good one all we'll see you later